Over the last few months, I've been filming a series of videos on my social channels called Gear You Didn't Know You Needed. And it just basically features daily items that I use to make making content easier. Well, I figured with the holidays fast approaching, you're either trying to figure out what to get your filmmaker friend or family member, or you're that filmmaker trying to explain what you might want as a small gift that's not gonna cost an arm and a leg, or a specialty camera shop to actually buy that piece of gear. So uh, I figured, we do a gift basket for filmmakers at your nondescript home hardware store. Let's go. Does not feel Christmassy right now. It's so warm. I figure like the first thing that I should probably get is something to like hold all the stuff in. So we'll get a, we'll, we'll get a, a milk crate. We're gonna be honest people today and actually buy the milk crate. But I hear a lot of people get them behind convenience stores. So you can get them there too. Standard milk crate. They fit on shelves really nice. You can see inside of them. And uh, they actually have a little spot you can put some gaff tape here and label what's in it. So it's always nice right there. So we got our milk crate and we'll just load it up with stuff. We got our bin and we got to uh, start filling it up with stuff that we need for making movies, right? So number one, we need extension cords. AC cable, always key. Black is the preference got expensive. I bought this stuff like three years ago and it was like for a hundred footer, it was half the price. It was like a hundred bucks. It was like a buck, a, er, buck a foot. Yeah. Buck a foot. So we're talking 25 foot, a hundred dollars. Inflation is a thing. 25. <laughs> the last, actually the last time I think I bought one of these, it was like 75 bucks. So yeah, I remember we're way cheaper. We're upping the price a little more than I thought we were, but we do need AC cable, so that's going in, unfortunately. I don't know, maybe where you are it's cheaper, but welcome to Canada where inflation is killing us. Editor Josh here. The one thing that I forgot to mention earlier was that the price of that cable is because that's the rigid brand. It's an outdoor extension cable or stinger as we like to call them in the film industry. Uh, it's a 12 gauge, which means that it can hold up to 15 amps on that one specific cable. So it is, a little better and that's why it costs a little bit more also just depends on the price of copper and copper is expensive right now all right let's get back into it oh god all right let's see let's see if we can find something that's not going to sting as much ah perfect we've got 650 pack of velcro and cable ties this is a multi-pack i didn't think we'd get so this one is standard cable ties and hook and loop straps. So you want to keep your camera cables organized, just cables in general. These guys are crucial and you'll, you'll lose a lot of the ones that you buy. So you might as well get a big bin. Man, this is a good aisle. This is a good aisle already. Come on, look. So my recommendation when you buy cube taps, which is I did a whole Instagram video on these and how amazing they are. Uh, these will give you three outlets, free, free, three female outlets uh, for every one that you plug into if you're in a hotel room. So I keep a couple in my backpack. I recommend buying like six of these. They're 764 a piece for these guys. I also have a few of these if you just need a bit of a different shape to them. Um, but I actually put these in like a clear mesh bag so I can see how many I have. It's not great to keep them just in here, but right now I don't have a bag, so this will work. So we'll just start off with four. This is a good aisle. The, this, what is this, the electrical, electrical aisle? Aisle six. This is the one. You're gonna get a lot of good stuff for whoever's making movies in this aisle. Okay, so we're looking for foam core. It's got a white side and a silver side. Great for reflection. You also don't want to get like, you want to make sure it's thick enough that's not going to break in higher winds. So I think this is our stuff here. Yes. I think this is it, right? Yeah, so this stuff is, this is what a? $28. 28 bucks. So this is insulation one and a half inch. Yeah, one and a half inch. Thickness is like a little more durable than your half inch here. Stuff just breaks in the wind a little bit easier. So 
obviously this is way too big to handle yourself, but the nice thing is that you can cut it into whatever size that you need. So this guy has got the silver side and a white side once you peel the green stuff off and then that will work to bounce light back at your subject. I actually just used a scrap piece for my last shoe with K2 snowboards and we uh, just had to feature a few snowboards in the forest and you just use that silver side, bounce the sunlight right back in. It looks cinematic. So the next thing that's like pretty crucial, eight clamps. Eight clamps are like, you use them for anything really. So we've got a few different sizes here. They got the big three inch ones. I don't think I ever use these. It seems a little excessive. So the two and a quarter, these guys work great. Kind of buy them in like twos or fours. Usually you need one on either end of whatever you're clamping. So we'll grab four of those and four of the one inch as well. These things like you can use them to clamp cables down, clamp lights down, gels to lights, uh, diffusion, like all kinds of stuff. You'll just find random uses for these all the time. So eventually you'll probably have a milk crate just like filled with A clamps. Now you'll lose those plastic guards within a week, probably within two days, but you can just wrap gaff tape around them and they do the trick too. So that's actually one of my favorite aisles of things I can't afford right now is garage organization. It's a work in progress. That's not gonna be enough space for all the things that I was talking about that we're getting today. So we gotta get a, a bigger plastic tote to hold some of the other things that we're gonna grab. See, people don't think that Home Depot is a dangerous place to come to when you're buying film gear, but it, oh, actually, yeah. it actually really is. For the next thing that we're getting, we're probably gonna need one of these guys. Fits great. That does not fit. And you don't want to forget your lid. We're gonna fill up this tote with our next item that is a great multi-use item uh, and that's moving blankets. These guys aren't like the official sound blanket, but they work great as sound blankets. You can, you can also use them as a negative fill if you use the black side. One side's blue, one side's black. So if you're in a pinch, you can use them as a negative fill. And you can use them like a moving blanket. If you're on set and you don't want to scratch up the floors, you can put your C-stands or your talents, stool, chair, whatever, put it over top of this. And it also stops some of the sound reflection coming up from the, the floor as well. Um, this video is going to be a complete hodgepodge, but I'm interjecting again here to talk a little bit more about sound blankets because they basically are a poor man's version of a sound panel. So something like this is a little more permanent and it's made to stay in one place. I've made these ones myself to dampen the sound that comes off of a lot of the steel that's in our shipping container offices. Something else that really helps is shooting a location that has, well, carpets. Now, if there's no carpets in that location, then you can throw another sound blanket or moving blanket on the ground and it'll help to soak up all that extra reflection that you'll get when shooting with hard surfaces all around you. Now, a space that just has more stuff in it will also help, but we're talking about sound blankets or moving blankets, so let's stick to that. So that is why moving blankets are a great, fairly cheap purchase for your filmmaker friend or for yourself. Guess what else we can use with these? What? What did we get earlier? We got A clamps. So A clamps, hold these guys up. It's all coming together. Oh, I didn't Home think Depot's about that. got it all. Oh, and actually Kristoff did actually need uh, paint. Paint. He needed a paint as well, so we'll get that at the end. The theme today has been I've visited this aisle four times. <laughs> and we're back again and we found our next one. So multi-tool, these guys are both 70 bucks, which actually for a Leatherman multi-tool isn't really that bad. These guys aren't the smallest and honestly you can probably get these ones on Amazon some slightly better ones, but if you want to try and do your all-in-one shop in one store, uh, this one has got 15 tools in there, but the main ones that you want to make sure you've got pliers, uh, small knife, and 
a flathead screwdriver. Actually, a Phillips too. If you can get those four things, four things on there, then uh, then you're pretty solid. But this has got plenty of other things on there that you'll definitely find handy to keep in your kit. So Gerber, Leatherman. This one's got 14 tools. So I mean, just by math, this is the better one to get, I think, right? So multi-tool, super key to grab. Okay, last thing we're gonna add to the list is painter's tape. It's just great because this isn't gonna damage walls, uh, especially if it's been painted, drywalls, anything like that. A lot of people think gaff tape works well. It doesn't, you don't wanna put that on anyone's wall because it will rip paint off. And then you're stuck with the bill fixing a damaged wall. So we've got a few different thicknesses of painter's tape. So I mean, depending on what you think you need, you can grab a couple of these because these will work great just to hold light things down. Sound. This just holds anything light on walls um, and it's also great to mark people's positions. What, what, what is that called? Uh, why am I blanking? No, it's literally just a mark. marking the spot. Yeah, yeah. just marking the yeah. spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what it's I'm talking about. It. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making this, uh, this video because I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> clearly. <sighs> and we're back in the studio. But before we ended the video, I figured I should run you through some of the different scenarios that you might use some of or all of the gear that we just bought while we were back at Home Depot. So let's run through scenario number one, which is this one right here. Uh, right now I'm actually using a giant piece of foam core and it's lighting me up. I'm doing this whole set with one light and we're gonna take away the foam core and you're gonna see just how big a difference it makes. Foam core, it's just a cheap piece of styrofoam you can get at Home Depot and uh, it makes a big difference for you. There's plenty of different options as to how you can use foam core to work with the lighting situations that you might come across. And I've set up this second shot here to kind of show an example of what it would be like if you were shooting backlit by nothing but the sun. Obviously you can see behind me, it's a super overcast day. So I've had to set up this setup in the studio, which took me way too long today, but hopefully it paints a better picture as to how you can do something like a walk and talk with talent where you can still use the sun as a backlight but still getting a nice soft key source while you're walking away from the sun so you're not wrapped in silhouette. So I'm just gonna change up a bit of the lights using the Sidus link here. Uh, also with the BTS cam, you can actually see I'm being lit by Aperture 300D Mark II with the uh, lantern. And then behind me, I've got a 600D Pro with F10 barn doors. And uh, that is going to be my sun source behind me and I'm using nothing but two pieces of foam core right now to key back and keep it not nice, soft source. So let's go pop in and uh, make some adjustments. All right, so we're just gonna crank up the 600D Pro to full pop, and we're gonna turn off the 300D Mark II. And now I'm being lit by nothing more than the 600D behind me, which again is just my sun source. So that's bouncing light back off of the foam core that we purchased at Home Depot. And you've got a pretty decent setup right now. Again, it's not a perfect example, but hopefully it paints a better picture as to how that's gonna actually look. So I'm gonna crank the studio lights back up and we'll go through some of the other stuff that we bought and show you how it can help you on sets like this where you're built up a little bit more and maybe help you stay organized and a little neater. So uh, let's turn the lights back on. A lot of what I'm trying to do when I'm loading up for a shoot and then while I'm on the shoot is actually just to stay organized throughout the day. So you can see I've got all of my different kinds of tapes including that paper tape that we got earlier all on a uh, cable or a rope right here so you can find it all very easily and you've got different sizes and different colors of tapes depending on what you need. Uh, next up, I've got my bag full of cube taps. and I got a lot of them. Your cube taps, keep them in a bag, will just keep your life a little bit easier for sure. And finally, your A or spring clamps as they're sometimes called. These guys, you can use them for anything. Right now, I've just got them rigged up, holding some of the cables down on the C-stands, just keeping it a little more neat and organized. But a lot of times where they really come in handy is if you have cable running overhead and you need to keep them over a junior boom or if you have a goal post set up you want to keep that cable up and out of the way. Well, these little spring clamps come in handy. So uh, I'm going to give you a quick tour around set, but 
you have any questions about anything that I use in this video or if you have some recommendations, feel free to leave them in the comments below. This was just kind of a quick and dirty setup that I had to make with the lack of good weather. But uh, we'll see you in the next video. And uh, that's all I got. All right, so if you're looking around set, like I said before, we've got the 600D Pro with the barn door set up there. And this is pretty well at, a, yep, we're at 100%. Uh, I tried doing some rigging to cut some of that blue flare that we were getting, but uh, well, I'm doing this on my own and it was getting too difficult to worry about. So next up we've got just a lantern and the 300D2 at 27%. That was plenty to uh, key my face on a darker day with lots of bounce. Like I said, just keeping everything on some rope, keep it organized, especially if you're shooting by yourself, super important. And uh, we got our different cube taps all over here. If you're going on location, be more organized than this. This is not ideal. This is me trying to set up for two hours and I have all the space right now, but now I have to clean it up. Now we've got the camera set up. So this was our A cam and uh, that was that's that's the set. Oh, I forgot the one. Here we go. So all powered off of one breaker and going to the cube tap. Also labeled with my name so I can get it back at the end of the day.